All right. Hello, everybody. This is OmniGamer. Um, I just wanted to make a quick video to discuss some of the mathematical difficulties in doing better in Dragster. Um, note that I'm still on travel, so I'm away from my normal setup, and uh, I'm doing the best I can with the computer that I have, but uh, can't quite keep up the same production values that I normally would. Um, in any case, there's been a lot of controversy lately about Dragster for Atari 2600. Um, I did a lot of work investigating this game, reverse engineering the code and all the rest of that stuff, and uh, in particular I made this simulator that goes through, um, it basically condenses all of the game rules into its own thing um, so that you can play Dragster by just changing some values here and basically seeing how that affects the distance. Um, I have some instructions on how to actually do that, and I might make another video sometime actually explaining how to correctly operate the sheet, since there's been some questions uh, about uh, how to interpret everything. Uh, but today uh, is a little different. Uh, I wanted to talk about some of the theoretical limits of Dragster, uh, according to just basically building up uh, the game rules one at a time. So this final spreadsheet is everything related to the game logic. Um, at least as far as how it handles your speed, your distance, and everything else. Um, and there's a lot of kind of complex nuances in what lets you go fast and not at different points. Um, but if we strip all that away and just come up with kind of our base idea of what Dragster is, uh, I wanted to go through that exercise just to kind of show uh, how you might think of what is actually possible uh, given certain circumstances. So for that, I set up this sheet, and this is completely blank right now. There's, there's nothing here, um, with the exception of over here I just enumerated frames and the time. Um, the only thing to know here is that the time displayed in Dragster is the equivalent of a fancy frame counter. Um, every frame, it just adds this constant value, 0 0.0334, to the prior number. And that's not actually uh, fractional as far as the game is concerned. It is just a, a pure uh, set of integers. So there's uh, nothing really difficult about trying to add up uh, those individual values. Um, and it's only added once per frame, exactly once per frame, and uh, goes along there. And that just continues cascading until you get to uh, whatever time you end up getting. And that just means that if you get a certain time, it, is, it means that you performed in a certain number of frames. And that's all that that means. Um, but to play Dragster, we have to define what the goal is. Um, what are we trying to do? What is a win condition? And for that, uh, the game has just a couple things set up. One is that you want to get to a raw di a distance of 97. And this is what it's checking for. So it actually has one instruction in there that just says compare to 97. And um, if it's greater than or equal, then it will trigger the victory conditions. Okay, simple enough. Uh, under the hood though, it's still a little trickier than that. This 97 is actually the higher byte of a two byte value. So what you're actually looking for is a total distance of 24,832. And I just call that raw distance. Um, and for the purposes of just showing this, I have both of them displayed. They are identical, it's just one is a little easier to interpret than the other. So this, these two are related. The challenge though is how do you actually change distance? What, what is causing some effect on that? And if you go back, think about your high school physics, um, it's, you're talking about a change in position. Uh, and the change in position is the speed, uh, but a change in speed is acceleration. So you kind of have that whole uh, quadratic formula going for you. Um, but for this purpose, the distance is simply the speed plus your prior distance. Cool. Um, about speed in Dragster, though, is that you can only ever increase by two speed. So that's basically saying that you have a constant maximum acceleration of, well, two speed per unit time, which is just a frame in this case. 
So here, we'll set that up right now. Equals that plus two. Your starting conditions are also zero for everything, and that's pretty harshly enforced, but you'll just have to take my word for it right now. Um, so if we increase by two on every frame, so we have a constant acceleration, that means that we take our current speed and add it to our prior distance. All right, so, and then just to complete that, it's the raw distance divided by 256. Cool. Now we've got it. Let's expand this out and show uh, exactly what that would get us under these circumstances. We're again looking for finish, crossing the finish line at um, distance of 97. So in that case, I have it uh, set up so it just highlights green anytime it's greater than 97. We win at frame 158 or a time of 527. Cool. That is the basic theoretical limit of Dragster, but there's some caveats here. You can see that speed continues uninhibited, uh, well past 256 and finishing out at 316 and continuing to increase. The problem with that is that speed is a one byte value, so it would actually max out at 255 is the maximum speed that it could achieve here. Uh, without uh, overflowing and causing problems. But more so than that, the game actually has its own idea of a speed ceiling that it imposes. And the speed ceiling is related to gears. So let's uh, just set that up real quick. Um, there's four gears, well, I guess five gears if you want to count neutral, but there's a speed limit associated with each gear. And those gears, one, two, three, and four, um, are related to the tachometer value and other things. But for the purpose of this exercise, we're just going to assume that tachometer is always maxed out and we always have access to the maximum speed for that gear. So the speed cap at one is going to be 32. Um, speed cap at two is 64. And these do increase approximately by double. Uh, it's actually slightly more than double. You can see in, in gear three, your speed limit is actually 130. And in gear four, it's 252. So there we go. Um, yes. So with that in mind, uh, let's just say that you somehow managed to start in fourth gear. So let's just impose this on our little uh, exercise. So instead we're going to do the minimum between the regular value and 252. Copy that all the way down and let's see what happens to the time. All right, so when it's capped at 252, our new possible best time is 5.41. Before it was a 5.27. Okay, that's fine. Um, but there's a problem. You can't just start in fourth gear. Uh, you have to increment through all of the different gears to get there. And not only that, you need to shift once to actually get into gear at all. You can rev your engine all you want in neutral, it's not gonna get you anywhere. You don't get any speed off of that. So we need to include this concept of shifting. And there's a big, big caveat about shifting at any time that you do it. And that's simply that when you shift, your speed is frozen on the next frame. So to capture that logic, let's again look at this. And we wanna say uh, if this frame is equal to one, then we're going to hold the, the prior speed. Otherwise, we'll just do what we were doing before. All right, so now if I were to put a one here, this just takes on the prior value and becomes zero, and that changes up the whole progression. Um, so let's copy that all the way down. Okay, and if we want to get into fourth gear, uh, let's just arbitrarily put it right at the beginning. So we need to shift four times in a row. One, 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 and one. 
Okay, and suddenly we have a problem. So with those four shifts, our best possible is 554. Okay, well, all right, let's think about this a little better. Uh, if we shift all at the beginning, that means that we keep our speed at zero the entire time. Whereas if we were to only do the initial shift out of neutral, um, we get to two here. So that helps our raw distance, even if we were to shift again right here and freeze it. So we still get distance uh, in that case uh, that's better for our speed. Um, so before, uh, if we have one, 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 and one here, um, our distance at the time 551 is 96.96. So not, not crossing the finish line quite yet. Uh, what happens though, if we were to move these down and let's just put them here at the edge of the first speed freeze so if we shift up all four times there hey look we do cross the finish line so this basically is just an exercise to show that um, for shifting you want to shift as late as possible so that your speed is as high as possible before the freeze because the freeze, it just remains constant, and you can't really do anything about that. So uh, instead, let's put them at the very limits of the speed caps. So we need to start here at, at uh, the first frame and shift, because this, well, we need to get into gear at all. So there we go. So we're in first gear, and then the next one is 32. And then 64. And then 130. Okay, so in this case, our best possible time is a 551, and a pretty pretty well into a 551 too. Um, good, there we go. That's that's our first initial showcase of how gears kind of interact. However, that's not all there is to it. There's a whole bunch of complicated stuff that has to deal with. Uh, tachometer delay and not being able to basically keep uh, the speed ceiling high uh, perpetually. Basically when the distance or the, when the speed between your current speed and the speed ceiling is too great, the game will try to pull the tachometer down uh, very quickly actually to um, make sure that you're much closer to the speed limit. Um, and the way that people deal with this in all practicality, it's it's too long of an exercise to try and show uh, how that would go into for this, but uh, basically it just means that people will uh, execute additional shifts after fourth gear to uh, throw off some of that decay, because when you shift um, while uh, holding the accelerator you gain a, a free three um, extra tachometer units, and that increases the, the speed limit and holds it off for another few frames. So. The only thing that we need to know, at least as far as this is concerned, is that to do better, we need to do additional shifts in uh, fourth gear. So let's see here. So this is frame 68. Uh, let's let's just pick 70 because 70 is a nicer number, and we reach max speed 252 at 130. So that's 60 units between them. Um, so with that in mind, let's just try adding in shifts evenly distributed between those two numbers. So that would be right at about 100. So if we add one shift there, we go from 97.84 to 97.61. Okay, fair. Still crossing the finish line. Um, let's instead do uh, split it into thirds with two additional shifts at 90 and 110. 97.37. All right, still doing good. Uh, now we'll do quarters, and that, uh, let's see, math. Um, that means that there's an extra one at 85, uh, 100 again, and 115. Yes. So with those three, we are now at 97.12. We are barely crossing the finish line at 551 uh, with three additional shifts in the final stretch. Uh, what happens with four? So these are again just being placed evenly distributed. Uh, it wouldn't actually 
work out that well if you tried to do this in the real game, but again, we're idealizing it. Um, we don't have a lot of extra complicated rules on top of it right now. Um, oh, wait a second. 94, 96, 106, and then 118. There we go. Okay, so once we have four extra shifts while in uh, gear four, suddenly we are finishing at 554. And just to finish it out, let's just do five to see what happens. So for five extra shifts, we're splitting it six ways. So that's 60 over oh, six is 10. So we just put them every 10 units. And 120. Boom. And we are right in the middle of a 554. So with five ships, you are fair distance away from, from even getting to a 551, and this is again extremely idealized. So where you'd actually be able to place these shifts, they, they almost certainly are not going to be this evenly distributed. Um, they're going to actually bunch up towards the beginning. Um, and this unit especially, um, it's very, un well, actually no, it, it is pretty much impossible to get up to the maximum distance because the speed decay stuff, or the tachometer decay stuff, starts to really hit you in third gear. Uh, in first and second, you can offset it by keeping your tachometer high uh, right out of the gate. Uh, but once you're in third gear, that's when it will really start to hit you. And the best optimal placement I've been able to find for this shift is in the neighborhood of 106 to 104. Uh, so that actually cuts your distance quite a bit as well. Um, but again, this is idealized. This is the best you could do, assuming that the rest of the rules basically didn't uh, apply. And um, this is just a thought exercise, uh, going through what are the theoretical limits of Dragster when you start to remove more and more of those obstacles. And yeah, it's doing better is hard. <laughs> um, but you have to have some reasoning for why you think you can do better. And if you can't do better in such an idealized case as this, uh, then you have to really start to figure out what is wrong with those assumptions. So, I mean, to do better in this case, you'd either need a case where uh, if you can find a way to start with greater than zero speed, uh, start with greater than zero distance, if you can increase by more than two speed per frame, which I very well know is, is not possible. Um, if you could come up with some way so that when you shift, it doesn't uh, freeze the speed. Like, all of those are ways that you could speed it up, but until you're actually able to do that, there's nothing. Um, so, really, uh, really tricky to come up with a basis for how you'd be able to do fast, uh, do faster than what's currently known uh, without being able to violate uh, some of those rules. Um, and Really, I encourage people to try and look into how they might be able to, or what, what could be done to get around it. Um, but, uh, yeah, right now, those are the big limitations from being able to actually do better. Uh, this is a, the simulator itself is a more complete version of that. It has all the rules in place, and you can fiddle with it and try to come up with whatever optimal strategies you can think of. Um, but, yeah. So uh, this was hopefully a quick video, and I'm sorry if it was terribly boring, but uh, I just wanted to describe some of those um, challenges so that uh, it could give a uh, better understanding of kind of what's being discussed and, and what is really possible. Um, yeah, and then I'll be back soon and, and hopefully back to streaming and other stuff before too long. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you all soon. Take care. Goodbye.